Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Look At. Today's episode is us taking a look at Adam's Venture, Episode 1, The Search for the Lost Garden. Wow, that is a mouthful. Now this is new on Steam, but it's not actually new in you know terms of actually existing. I believe this is an episodic series that started in 2009. And it probably got a digital download or a physical release, but it is now being ported to Steam for distribution. It's only $5. It is a action... well, not action. It's an adventure game. Uh, you know, kind of like a 3D action-adventure game along the lines of maybe like a mist type game. But it's also heavily inspired by games like Uncharted. Without further ado, we are going to start a new game here because I've learned my lesson with puzzle games and usually do these Let's Look Ats by showing you puzzles I've already completed so I don't get stuck for 25 minutes. So we'll start the game, you'll hear the cutscene, and I think you're pretty quickly going to be reminded of what this game is is trying to go for in terms of influences and inspirations. Uh, all progress will be lost, so the game does not have multiple save files, which is kind of archaic, but okay. And as we get started here, they will give you the uh, kind of story beats. February the 12th, 1928. During excavations at an old church in Luz, France, we found a strange scroll containing ancient writing and typical Templar symbolism. Today I, Adam Venture, discovered what these inscriptions mean. It's incredible. I think the scroll pinpoints the exact location of the four rivers from the book of Genesis, the Pishon, Gihon, Tigris, and Euphrates. See, this kind of weirds me out because I... I'm not familiar with the first two rivers, but I'm pretty sure the Tigris and Euphrates, like, you could look on a map and find those. Corporation ...and the skills of Professor Jacques Saint-Omer. we found the gates of Eden at the source of the four rivers. Who knows what lies beyond? I just can't believe it. After more than four years of searching, we're putting up base camp at the foot of the gates. Evelyn is also really excited, and quite frankly, even the dog seems impatient. Can't wait to start digging. So, you know, as we get started here, I'm pretty sure he's done talking, so I can finally, you know, get my two cents in. Uh, honestly, I think the game looks fantastic. Like, from a graphical standpoint, for a $5 indie game, I think this looks really, really good. Perhaps not on par with, like, modern Xbox 360 or PS3 games, but I think it definitely looks more than adequate. Uh, and brace yourself, because I'm going to say a lot of negative things about this game, so, you know, take the positive when you can. So, we're in control of Adam Venture here, and Look yes... Clairvaux Corporation sure means business. Don't interrupt me again, or I will straight up delete your character, Adam. Yeah, the character's name is Adam Venture, and uh, the game is called Adam's Venture. I think that's one of the lamest things I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, now, graphically, like I said, the game looks pretty good. But I think the animation is horrible. Like, when he's running, he looks like an old lady trying to power walk through a mall. Wow, those gates are enormous. I wonder what the doormat will be like. Also... Adam Venture is one of the most annoying characters, I think, maybe in video game history. No matter what's going on, he always has a wisecrack, and I mean, that's definitely in the mold for, like, an archaeologist of this type, like an Indiana Jones or a Nathan Drake, but this guy's jokes aren't funny. Also, the controls are really wonky. Like, I'm using WASD to move around. You don't use your mouse for anything in this game, and that becomes a substantial problem, as you will see. So I'll move down the ladder here. Thanks for the pro tutorial, Jonathan Blow. And we will go talk to this lady and see what's up with that. Hi, Adam. Did you bring down the rest of our supplies? Well, uh, I brought my cap and this torch. What more can we possibly need? <laughs> see, he's uh, funny. He's the hat in the... We're at the back of the plane. Food. Hmm. I thought that was your makeup. Ha ha ha! Makeup a kid! Big sandstorm coming our way. No worries. The pilot promised he'll be back as soon as possible. So, what are we supposed to eat until then? Well, we've got one crate of apples. It's just that last time a woman ate an apple around here, things got kind of... You <laughs> get it, because he's... What a learned joke. Now, take this radio and go and see the professor. He needs your help with something. Adam Venture, you never cease to amaze me. A strange device in front of a huge gate. A huge closed gate. Nah, I don't see the connection. 
You see, he uses sarcasm, and that's how the audience knows that we're supposed to laugh alongside of him no matter what he says, even if it's not even funny. So I'm just going to keep running like my guy took a shit in his pants here. Ah, Adam, there you are. I have carefully studied the puzzle device that seems to control the gates, and I believe some of its essential parts are missing. Can't we just blast our way in? You fool! Do you have any idea how much those gates are worth? To science, I mean. However, there might just be another way in. These rocks seem to block some sort of tunnel. Well, unless there's some scientific reason not to blast our way through, I'll go and find some explosives. Okay, so now we're finally done with this, like, initial story stuff. And we can get into the actual meat of the quote-unquote gameplay in Adam's Venture. So let's come down here. And then... Ignore our dog. You know, typical good pet owner advice. And we got our first puzzle. So yes, this game is like an adventure puzzler along the lines of something like, I don't know, I suppose a mist. Now the way this puzzle works is that uh, you can see on the left side, triangle equals 25, square equals 40, circle equals 30, and diamond equals 5. These are actually the ingredients and the proportions that we need in order to make this dynamite. So if you look at the top... One second, I'm just going to show you how this works. First we have to move these... You know, I'm doing a very poor job explaining this right now. Give it a second. So we can rotate these well, barrels right here. And you can see they have proportions on them, like a quarter, a half, three quarters, and 100%. Now, we need to get 25 triangles, 40 squares, 30 circles, and 5 diamonds into our ending dynamite. So you can see we start with 100 triangles here. Actually, let's start with our, our rhombuses. That's easy. This jug on the far right, 40 rhombuses. And we want to eventually have five. So first, we are going to... Hmm. Starts with 40 and we want to have five. I knew I shouldn't have tried to do math on camera. Well, five is one-eighth of 40. So we first want to do a quarter of this. And then when it comes down through that first barrel, it'll do a quarter. And then when it comes down through the second one, which we can't actually change, it'll be another quarter. So a quarter of 40 is 10. And a, Oh, no, no, no. I'm totally wrong. We want to do half of 40 which is 20 and then a quarter of that which is five okay perfect now we got 120 circles in that third vat at the top and we want to end with 30. uh so far this seems pretty good 120 are going to come down it's going to stay at 120 through that first barrel then it's going to become 30 on the second one okay we're fine there then we have triangle 100 triangle on the far right on the top and we want a quarter of that well the vat on the bottom says a half so obviously we need to make this one a half Half of 100 is 50, and obviously half of that is 25. I think this is the solution to our puzzle. I can't remember if this is actually correct, but I believe so. We will see anyway. Yes, indeed. So, that puzzle actually took me fucking forever to figure out what to do on the first try, because I had no idea what the things meant. I mean, I'm bad at puzzlers innately, or maybe just because I haven't practiced them or didn't play them a lot when I was a kid, but, like, there's, it's so esoteric, and there's, like, no hint system at all, at least from what I can tell. And I mean, maybe that just makes me bad, but I don't think the puzzles in this are very well designed. I think that one is too difficult. Particularly, I should note, that this is designed as a quote-unquote family-friendly, non-violent game. So, you know, that's marketing buzzwords for, you can buy it for your kids! What kind of eight-year-old kid is gonna sit there and figure that out? I need fire. Maybe some. Oh, I need fire, right. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Another thing they don't explain. If they would just do, like, one tutorial puzzle, it would eliminate so many problems in this game. So we're going to ignite our torch. You know, pretty logical that you would think to ignore, ignite that torch, despite the fact that your character is not even holding a torch. It relies on the classic point-and-click adventure foundation of just, like, running up to everything and pressing enter to see if you inspecting it does something. Now hurry up and blast those rocks. So we'll put down our dynamite here. Then run away. Although I think if we stand here, nothing bad will happen. Or maybe the dynamite just won't explode. <laughs> That's a really good design on dynamite. So now we're going to enter our cave here. Hmm, interesting. Talk to the professor, and then I'll talk about my gripes with this I'll game's camera. Alright, so the game utilizes a stationary camera whoa, whoa. along the same lines as like, uh... Oh, one second, I'll let you finish your goddamn conversation. Loud and clear. I just fell down a slope, but nothing is broken. Just my pride. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Should we follow? I don't think so. Unless there were swinging blades in paradise. I'll have a Adam, you are so fucking sarcastic. Be careful. 
Okay. We're gonna run through these swinging blades first. Then I'll talk about my gripes with the camera if I can get beyond a cutscene here. Okay, I believe I can actually have some communication now with the audience, which is the purpose of these videos. So the game utilizes a stationary camera, not unlike like a Resident Evil game. And it works really poorly. Check out this jump animation, too. Oh yeah! Uh, it works really poorly, like those games, uh, because every time you go to a new camera angle, it... Crouching through caverns. Great sense of adventure. Incredible strain on my No one can hear you! Uh, every time you go through a new section, your controls, like, change based on the camera angle. So I'm hitting W to go straight through here, then when I get in here, immediately, it makes W go backwards. Like, shit like that is... reprehensible. Considering we're in like the year 2012 in gaming. And wow, I wonder what game this is inspired by. Well, I guess you could say a couple. Looks an awful lot like Uncharted, looks an awful lot like Assassin's Creed. Both games that were very popular around the time of this game's development. Just a little cliffhanger and some bats. Nothing to worry about. Evelyn? Are you still there? What's that sound? Probably just the radio. I didn't hear anything. Call as soon as you've found something. Okay? Hmm. Okay. Alright, so now we've got our puzzles here. See if you can follow this. We gotta drag this thing out of the way. Let go of it. And then move into the spot where it was. So it starts with that puzzle that is like... In my mind, way too difficult for the first puzzle of the game, especially considering the target age group. And then it goes on to puzzles like uh, this one that you'll see right here. Where basically... I've forgotten if I have to drop down that hole, actually. I don't think so. We're just walking over here, hitting the switch. And you all know how I love switch puzzles. And then we get like this long, laborious look at this grate. Like, oh my god, is it ever gonna fucking go down? Finally! Must be running like, you know, Pentium 1 in this Garden of Eden tunnel. Also, this game is like deeply religious to the point where, like, I'm still incredibly early in it and in fact probably will not play much more of this, but I can't tell whether, oh god damn camera, uh, whether this is like a game, let's put it this way, a lot of the reviews I saw for this game were on sites like Gamers for Christ. Not that there's anything wrong with that, I'm just saying that I think this might be, uh, a game with deep religious themes, let's put it that way. I mean, we are searching for the Garden of Eden, and it is billed as a non-violent, family-friendly adventure? I don't know. So as we enter this next room, you'll see another important problem with the game. Well, actually, first we'll go talk about a little bit more about the religious themes in this game as we open up this chest. I found the Genesis Code, the code is creation. <clears throat> what lies beyond these gates, gold, the Tree of Life. I don't know what that has to do with the Terrence Malick film. Totally weird animation on the side. The other problem I was going to mention with the game is the camera, which is god-awful. Uh, since I can't use my mouse to actually change the way that the camera looks, I have no idea where I'm supposed to go here. Eventually I just divined that I'm supposed to try to jump up onto this thing. But the controls are so shitty that like I can never, almost never, get up there on the first try. And hey, we got to hit another switch here. Puzzling! <clears throat> now we have raised that elevator in the other room. And we'll only play a little bit more of this, because I think it's pretty clear what my impressions of this game are so far. Spoilers, uh, I don't think this game is very good, and I don't think you should buy it. And I mean, that's harsh to say, because it is only $5. The one exception I will, I will say is uh, if you have, like, a really young kid, and for some reason you don't want to expose them to the violence of a game like Uncharted, but you want them to experience, you know, Indiana Jones-style action... This is maybe something that you can pick up for a really young kid, and, you know, spoilers, really young kids are dumb. So they won't realize that this game is shitty. They would, may, might just stop playing it, though, once they realize that it requires a pretty good knowledge of math to be able to progress through this game, because almost all of the puzzles that are actually somewhat difficult are based on math, and I use somewhat difficult, uh, you know, qu quite Roger, loosely. The professor has found something. Are you listening? Uh, sure, I... There's that hissing sound. What, no sarcasm now, motherfucker? No, I heard it too. Probably radio static. Nothing to worry about. But you might have a brain tumor. You're supposed to be the hero, remember? Anyway, here's the professor. I have translated some of the inscriptions. And I have some bad news. The caves you're in were designed to keep mankind from ever returning to Eden. 
a giant leap for mankind is only a small step for Adam Venture. Oh, put a sock in it. But it hears my name. You are so insufferable. Yes, we get the point. Just get on with it. Get on with it. Okay. Well, we're going to step on this switch. Whoa, Jane, stop this crazy thing. Just get on with it, he says. Why I stay with these Clairvaux guys is beyond me. Of course, they're paying for all of this. But all right, so we're going to show off our last puzzle here that I'm going to look at anyway. Or maybe two more puzzles very quickly. Uh, as we go through here, we're going to get another cutscene, which is nice enough to like show us the area around us, which is good, because I can't move the camera to see what's going on. Hey, my radio doesn't work two miles underground. Can you hear me? There's a lot of interference. It's the smoke monster from Lost. Yeah, yeah, I think it's bats. Wow, thank God uh, all these signs in ancient Mesopotamia guarding the Garden of Eden are written in modern day English. That was really nice of them. So here's our second to last puzzle. We got three phrases. So these three things, are, things remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. And we have to put them in an order that makes sense. That was super difficult. Again, I'm so glad that this puzzle is in English. It was really nice of, you know, ancient humans to put this in a language that I would understand while playing this video game. Now, they've said love is the greatest of all. So I think it would be smart of me to go through the love door here so I don't get killed by the lost smoke monster. Sorry, smoke monster, you can't get through the cage, can you? Even though you're an amorphous piece of matter that can phase through anything and it seems to be made up entirely of dust or smoke. We're not supposed to call them black things anymore. Okay. And then we'll get into our last puzzle here, and I am so excited to be done with this video. Oh, we got another chest. Maybe I should go check that out. I can't get to it from here. Oh well. We will use this. I think this is what I'm looking for. Ah, yeah, this is exactly it. So our last puzzle that we're going to look at here is Sudoku, basically. We have all these Roman numerals, which we have to, uh, you know, add together in rows and columns in order to make each one add up to ten. I'm actually not going to sit here and do this for you guys because, you know, I don't want to imbue upon you the torture of watching me trying to solve a Sudoku puzzle in real time with the added pressure of knowing an audience is watching. Uh, so I'm just gonna say that is it for Adam's Venture, starring Adam's starring Adam Venture. You can see we don't have a whole lot else to offer here. It's an adventure game. Uh, you know, honestly, I've been harsh on this game, but I think this game could be okay if you're a a religious family and b you have a young child who you know maybe is young enough that they shouldn't be exposed to violence, but too old old enough to understand how to solve a sudoku puzzle with roman numerals are kids still learning roman numerals in school today i don't know uh definitely i think most adults are going to be like why would i play this when i could play uncharted i guess one reason is that it's only five dollars but you know that excuse only goes so far when i feel like i'm wasting my time playing this game not to mention a waste of money but as always thank you guys for watching i will see you next time